All right, for dish number three, I have a bunch of uh, penne regatta left over, so I'm going to make an Alfredo sauce, okay? So here I've just taken and melted about two tablespoons of butter so far and about four cloves of garlic. And you don't want to brown this or toast this. You just want to simmer really set. See how it's barely simmering in here? Okay, just until the garlic is nice and soft. And I'm going to put in some more butter now. You don't have to put in as much butter if you don't want to, but this is how, uh, how we like it. Okay, I'm going to crank this up just a little bit. This is still on very low. I'm going to get this simmering up here just a little bit more. There we go. To the butter and garlic, I'm going to add about a tablespoon of olive oil and this is cold pressed uh, I believe that's from this right here says it's from Italy I think it's yeah it's Italian it's the good stuff believe it or not I found that at Big Lots for three dollars for a big thing of olive oil I'm telling you it is good it's delicious lightly cook this garlic in this olive oil and butter mixture you add as much garlic as you like. Now some people will add onion at this point. I don't like onion in my Alfredo sauce. Okay, this is almost done. You do not want to burn your garlic, okay? You just want to get it nice and, uh, and soft. So just be really careful and just keep your eye on it. Very important that it's not firm. I, mean, I don't like biting into really hard garlic when I'm when I'm eating. I like the taste of garlic in my sauce. I don't like the taste of it crunching in my teeth. Ugh. Talking about not getting a kiss on the second date. Ooh, my goodness. Okay. Now if you were putting in onions in this, which I don't suggest, uh, just a few little white or red onions, then you'd want to simmer this for about five minutes. Just like this right here, just getting them nice and soft. You never want to brown your onions, just get them nice and soft. Because you don't want to change the color of the Alfredo sauce too much. Alright, I see so many people that brown their onions and then the Alfredo sauce is brown. It doesn't look good. Now, I'm going to go ahead. I got these carrots. You can put broccoli in here, whatever, but I got these carrots. And I'm just going to put a few carrots in here. carrots. You can put peas in there, broccoli, whatever you like. Okay, now I'm just going to kind of simmer these up on low for about another five minutes. These carrots will really absorb that butter and garlic flavor and that olive oil. Oh my lord. And this is, like I said, this is such a really good olive oil. I'm going to go back for some more of that. I can't believe I found that at, my brother and I tell you, I found it at Big Lots. You guys will all be going and getting it. Keep it moved, keep it tossed. More olive oil. So I got a lot of sauce to make. A lot of sauce because I got a lot of pinay left, okay? crank this up just a little bit. I don't want to burn that garlic, so I just want to crank up the heat just a little bit. Trying to keep that garlic from burning. We'll be right back in about three or four minutes. All right, so what we're going to do next is we got the carrots nice and soft. You can see they're starting to bend now when I go this way. See, they're kind of curling up a little bit. And I did this on a very low heat, as low as I could go. Alright, make sure I'm filming and I am. Now we're going to take some heavy whipping cream. And this is 32 fluid ounces of it. Let me see how much pin pin it. Not 
not too bad at all. Okay, I'm going to leave some extra just in case I need it for something else. Okay. So I'm going to break out the whisk. My new pan. I don't, I'm going to be really soft with this wire whisk because this is my new pan and I don't want to scratch it. Okay, I'm just going to kind of blend this in. Bring the temperature up. I put in almost that whole thing. I left just about that much in the bottom of that 32 fluid ounces. So I'd have to say I put in about 28 fluid ounces of the cream. And I only measured this much. I mean, I would have made more, but I think this is enough for the amount of pasta that I have left. And this should be more than enough for four meals for me and John. You don't want to eat the same thing too much, too often throughout the weeks because then you want a variety. And I'm making a mess. Did I just drop that? Okay, good. I didn't. <laughs> the way my day's going, I'm surprised that didn't fall. Oh, and it did. And this is what I have to say about that. Let me go rinse this off. Like I said, broccoli in here, whatever, that's fine. I'm going to put in some parsley. Add a little bit of green to it. See, that'll add a little bit of green to the pasta. Fresh parsley is always better, but parsley is good for you. It's, it's got a lot of good stuff in it. I don't want to add my uh, salt and pepper yet. You want to add that last to a dish like this. And here it is. It's coming up to a boil. You can see it's starting to move. Now is when you want to put in your broccoli, if you're going to put in broccoli. Now we're heating it up. Now we're going to thicken the heavy whipping cream. This is by no means diet food, so don't write me. This is not diet food. But I only eat a small breakfast of a piece of toast and an egg in the morning, or I have pancakes if I'm filming it for whatever reason. I might have a gluten-free pancake left over. We are going to make some breakfast foods for the freezer as well. Now we're going to put in a block and a half of cream cheese. A block and a half of cream cheese. I mean, this is going to be the best Alfredo sauce you've ever had. There's only one other time that I tasted Alfredo sauce that I would have died to have the recipe. And, uh, yeah, there we go. Let's see how that does. That was about, um, that was about, well, that's probably about 15 ounces there that I've got in here so far. See how that does. I had a lot of penne pasta left over when I made the um, the other freezer meal, so and this is my favorite dish, so trust me, I'm not gonna have my feelings hurt at all if I have extras. <laughs> and if you have company over, it's really nice to have something like this uh, ready to pop in the oven and ready to go. Somebody you know sick, funerals, whatever, you can take these over to the family. It does not hurt to have extras of anything from your monthly meal planning. Now you can meal plan and put in the freezer by the week, by um, by every two weeks. You do it bi-weekly. You can do it by the month. Now right now I'm just going for the entire month. Usually I do by the week, but I'm doing by the month now, just so I can show you how to do it. Just cook in volume. Bake in volume. I mean, if you're doing it, do it. And this is a lot easier than all that canning, and it's a lot cheaper than all those canning jars, just to be able to put them up and put them up in the freezer. The problem is, is having the freezer space. So what I do when I clean up my refrigerator, we go to the grocery store and I figure out what meat I need to use up, I make up recipes that I like. I mean, you know, I know what recipes I like. Look at this cream. Isn't this looking delicious? Look at this. Now, we haven't had salt and pepper yet to this. But anyway, um, I base the recipe around what meat I've got left in the freezer at the end of every two months. But now I'm going to start doing this at the beginning of every month. I'm going to do this. And then there won't be really any loose meat in the refrigerator. Everything's already going to be cooked and in, into, you know, into the dishes that I plan on making for the month. 
And all I gotta do, warm up the stove, put these on a cookie sheet, fill them out the night, you know, the night before, have my schedule. I gotta schedule on my computer that tells me what I'm supposed to fall out of the freezer. And I'll go grab that number. So if it's spaghetti and meatballs, then it will have a blue, like a little blue tag, and I'll put a number one on it. And then I'll unfall two of those. Now, this is something I haven't done yet. The Parmesan cheese is a little bit salty. Because I don't want to make it too salty. So that was about three quarters of a cup. Let's go ahead and go for the full cup. There we go. The Parmigiano cheese. Let's crank the heat up here now and melt that cheese in here and melt that in here together. Looky, it's got a nice consistency to this. Now we're going to go ahead and spice this up. Um, you don't want to put in too much salt, but it takes more salt than you think. But you do not want to get this too salty. I need one of those little salt pigs. Put in a little pepper. White pepper's best, but... Thank you. And I'm just going to use some pre-chopped, pre-grilled chicken. Again, this is about making it easy. Alright, i got to start taste testing this just a little bit. Let me grab my taste. Remember, you want this to boil. You want this, this salt to set in here for just a minute because you want this to, um, you want that salt to meld into the sauce. You want it to kind of melt in here before you taste test because it can actually, spices get stronger over time, especially in canning, things like that. You can put a little hot peppers in here if you'd like. Just taste it. Get yourself some clean spoons. Remember, don't double dip. Okay, now let's give this a try again. This is so good. Oh, we are almost there. We are on the verge, ladies and gentlemen. We are on the verge. Okay. Now, I don't have to have mine that salty. Like I said, if it had been salted better. But I accidentally grabbed the unsalted butter. I can see that now because it's taking more salt than it normally does. Try to remember too, we're making a lot of this. You wouldn't have to make this much. Unless you had a really big family of six or eight, you wouldn't have to make this much sauce. But And when this congeals and it firms up in the refrigerator, this is really good for chips and dips too. Without the carrots in it, this is really good for chips and dip. Okay. All right, another one more clean spoon. It's got a nice coating. See that nice coating? Mmm, that's it. I think it might need a little bit more olive oil too. I know that loosens it up a little bit, but I like the flavor of this olive oil. It is so delicious. Mmm. It's got a nice. Uh, Nice, uh, smooth, garlicky flair to it. And this is really good to cook for a first date. So ladies out there, you cook this for your man, and I'm telling you, he'll put a ring on it. This stuff is delicious. Mm. Always put the Parmesan cheese in before you add the salt. Alright, so now we're going to add the grilled chicken. Okay, we got the chicken in there. We could have stood to put a little bit more chicken in there, but that's all I had of that. I thought there would be more chicken in that sack, didn't you? It's kind of a, kind of being a cheap, cheapskate there, wasn't it, they? Okay, that's it. It's done. We're going to turn off the heat. We're going to carry this over. And we are going to go ahead and pack this into our freezer container. Making the uh, penne, chicken alfredo. I just got some pre-shredded Parmigiano, Romano, and Asagio cheese. Yeah, I think this is going to be the better way to do it. I think I'm just going to 
put her in there. There we go. So see, I ended up using that whole bag of Panay. I mean, it was a big bag. <laughs> and I used it for the spaghetti. And like I said, you could have put the Italian sausage in that other recipe I just gave you up there. This one, look at that. Just the right amount of sauce. Perfect. Only time I like my pasta to be too much sauce is when it's Alfredo sauce. This could definitely have stood to have more chicken in it. So I would suggest buying two uh, bags of the pre-grilled chicken or grilling the chicken yourself, which is what I normally do. But when you're making it up for the freezer, remember it's about convenience and also it takes a lot more time to do it that way. So, And again, you can make extras of this. I'm just going to put in a little bit of the Parmigiano cheese here. Sagio and the um, Romano. The same thing here. And by the way, I pre sprayed these just like I did for the other pastas. If you don't like a lot of sauce, then put in your, uh, your penne or whatever, your fettuccine. Put it in here first. Again, you can make this with fettuccine. I normally do. You can make this gluten free. That's fine too. There you go. A little bit more in here for daddy. Okay, that's two for daddy. Always just kind of tap it in there. And then here's going to be two for me. Serve this with a little bit of garlic bread or some breadsticks. Okay. And the salad. I'll do a little bit extra just in case I give this to someone else. Normally this is right here is about how much I can eat, but I'll eat mine the next day for lunch. So, but normally I just eat two meals a day. John will tell you I don't eat, I don't eat that much. Okay, I'm just going to put in a little bit of the cheese. Okay. It looks like we got enough to make some more. And you can always go with smaller for lunches at work or something like that. You can always go on the smaller containers. Or if you're going to do a family size, picnic size, or take to a gathering size, you can always use this side, size here. Did I say one bite? <laughs> oh my gosh. See, I resisted the urge to double dip. Trust me, I want to do. So that's five containers of the chicken alfredo hubby. And it is absolutely going to be delicious. You could put shrimp in this. And here, peas, broccoli, whatever you like, you can put in this, okay? It's very versatile. Um, you can put chunks of ham, you can do the chicken, ham comes in the pre-cube. She's trying, my dog's trying to get a fly. We've got a winter fly in here. Look at her. Let's see if we can going to see Lexi. Say hi. You going to get the fly? You going to get the fly? You're too cute. Okay, we hope you enjoyed these last three recipes that I put together for you. This, uh, you can just make them, I mean, you know, if you've got a family or whatever, but these, I wanted to show you how I put them into the freezer. And then I label them, and then we pull out what we want to have for dinner. But normally I'll just try to put them in the freezer off and on. I mean, there might be a night I went Alfredo, and he might want spaghetti and meatballs. So we'll just pick out what, what we want to get. But we'll only get one each time, and then we'll have 31, 30 to 31 days of meals in the freezer, already set up, no more eating out. Um, Unless, of course, we get invited and someone's paying. Do I hear crickets? Okay. <laughs> so we're still going. We still have all kinds of things left to go. You can see over here, all kinds of food. I still have to make. Ooh, did you know these were 
open? No, I didn't. Looky, unzip and looky, the top's been torn off. That's going to be my next project, so um, I can't make the taco casseroles. All right, I'm tired. I'm going to go to bed. We're all going to go to bed. Go get Ducky. He's wet. You remind me of Jurassic Park. <laughs> all right, we love you. Good God. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. Oh, she took it right out of my hand. You're fat. Sounds like a horse. 2.30 in the morning. All right, so I got to get up in four hours. So we'll do this again in just a few more hours. I'm going to go grab a little sleep. We love you. Go with God. And remember, meal plan. Put it up in the freezer, whatever you've got the space to do. If you can do it, do it for the entire month. If you can only do it for a week, then do it for a week. But this really saves you money and keeps you from eating out.